And I think the world is finally starting to catch on what I've been saying a long time about this woman here, the future of tennis, ladies and gentlemen. She sets yet another record. Another record. There's no one inside this top 10 right now as a teenager that has accomplished more than Corey this age in terms of records. Now, Iga's there. Iga's got a lot of records. We understand that. But overall records, body of work, no, there's no one there that has more records than this woman right here. She's got so many to name. I mean, there's no one inside this top 10 that alone has made two WTA final appearances as a teenager. How long has she been inside the top 10 as a teenager? None of the ladies inside this top 10 has done that. We still look at Coco as this little teenager because she's so young. No one realizes. I don't think people realize when when they critique her game how young she is. Now, this is her last week as a teenager. We realize that. But she sets one more huge record. There's no lady in the history of tennis since the 1000 format to win more wins as a teenager. 5-0-50, ladies and gentlemen. And she's got the opportunity this week to add on to that total. 50 wins at master events as a teenager. That is a record. No one inside this top 10 has done it. In fact, most of the players inside this top 10, they didn't start blossoming till their mid-20s. I think Iga's the exception to that. Now, Iga's amazing. We all know that, right? But Coco is so amazing. At practice the other day, she shut it down. The line just wrapped around. She shut it down. She's a huge draw. Thank you, Coco, for signing my memorabilia. You're amazing. Thank you, Coco. I really appreciate that. You made my day. But listen, guys, Corey, this match here for her, I'm, I'm out of words because this was by far the best match of the tournament so far for her to come down 5-2. I'm thinking to myself, now listen, I knew Clara would, would cover the spread, right? I, I did think Coco was a bit overvalued here because it's about matchups, guys. And a lot of people think titles determine how good you are. It really doesn't. It's about matchup. Clara matches up with Coco. A lot better than most players. She's fast. She can play the net. She can return ball. She's a very good shot maker. Drop shot slices. You name it. She matches up really good with Coco. So it's going to be a tough matchup. Now, I thought Coco should have played the power game and really punished Clara because that's her weakness, right? But they did get into a lot of exchanges at the net that were, were overall, I mean, Coco won the majority of them. But there were some exchanges at the net that Buell played very well with. And I'm like, Buell, her speed, her footwork is top notch. But back to Coco, guys. It gets easier from here. And you guys will see that. It's going to get easier from here. I do see Coco clearing into the fourth round without a problem. It's going to get a lot easier because she's not going to have to deal with this type of speed in her next couple matchups. Uh, it's going to be a lot more power here where she can get to her back end and play the deep ball. Buell's got a good short ball. She can just disrupt anyone's momentum and timing and rhythm. So it's tough to find a rhythm with Burrell because of her variety. So it will get easier here from Coco. And look, this reminds me of Cincinnati, how pumped up. Look, mental toughness. It's all in the mind. Serena Williams, I love the mental focus for her to just not give up. The average player would have just gave up down 5-2 unbelievable how she played. Now, she's a bit shocked that she has the record for most wins and master events as a teenager, but you look at that. Amazing father. Unbelievable, but you're playing great tennis. It's such a pleasure to have you here in Tennis Paradise. Yeah, I didn't know that was a record. Who I have the most? Yeah, 50. 50 <laughs> wins as do. a teenager in the WT1. <laughs> yes, guys, 50 wins. He has the opportunity to add on to that, but like I said, it's going to get a lot easier. Uh, but she struggled today. I would like to see Coco improve the double faults. Uh, I just think, I don't think she has to lift. I don't think she has to reach because she's netting. And I mean, she is short. So, but I mean, take a look at someone like Ashley Barty. Ashley Barty was short too. She's got to improve the double faults. I mean, I think the biggest knock, uh, the forehand's amazing. Did you see the last couple of points where, I mean, Coco literally returned like what, 12 forehands in one exchange with, with Bruel. Bruel kept attacking it, but I do feel that early in the, especially the second set, Bruel would go to the forehand and then try to attack the back foot with the backhand. That is not a good strategy. You do not want to go anywhere where Coco's backhand is, where she can get to that backhand. That's not a good strategy. I mean, people knock her forehand, so why is she so good? Why is she so elite? Because her backhand's top notch. You do not want to 
do not mix it up with going to the forehand and then, and then back to attacking the backhand. Don't do that. It's it, because it doesn't make sense. You're going, you're literally trying to attack one of her so-called weaknesses and then you're going to her strength. That's just going to make her matter and just punish you. And she did that. I thought that was a horrible game plan for, for Buell. But take a look like uh, the loss against Anna Kylinskaya. Anna did not let up on the forehand side. She didn't let. She didn't let up. She continued to attack it where Buell kind of mixed it up. And I don't think that was smart to change speeds and do that because you played into Coco's strength. But Coco comes through, sets another record. At, I tried to run off all the records he had one time, and I'm like, this is this is too many. There's no way I can list all these records. And another one. We'll be back, guys. Go, sh- go show Coco some love. I'm exhausted. <laughs> See you soon.